Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest, and she's back, and it's Rebecca Vigas. She is a outstanding writer, and she focuses on storytelling, legacy writing, memoir writing, and she's just phenomenal. She has a podcast with The Advisor, and she also has, she's part of our podcast community. She has done amazing things, and she's back today to talk talk about writing and how every story you write, it's very important to have a plot. And she's going to go over why, and she's going to go over how to create a plot and give us some handy tips for people who are out there who really want to be writers and write good content. Rebecca is the one to listen to because she has outstanding advice and she's done a lot with herself. She is an author and she is just a truly amazing. So Rebecca, take it away and tell everybody a little about yourself and why having a plot is so important and how you see so many people writing, but they don't have a plot. Good morning, Stacy, and thanks for having me back. Um, I have been writing for 60 years of my 70 year life. And so I know a little bit about writing. Um, I ran a small publishing company for six years, and that was an amazing adventure. It stopped when my book designer said, I'm not designing anymore. Mm -hmm. And when at the same time, Amazon dumped Create Space and went just to KDP, which was foolish in the first place, but mm -hmm. that's another story. And so I had four writers under me and I had an author who wrote 277 pages of a novel that didn't have a plot. It's like, I couldn't understand why people were doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Stories are meant to entertain. Novels are meant to entertain. But there has to be a reason for why your characters do what they do. Mm -hmm. They don't just plod through the story and get to the end. Right. It, it makes no sense to do that. Yes. In my own books, the first time, first book was a small town murder. And how it affected and impacted everybody in the town. Right. Because in small towns, trust me, the impact when someone dies is just unbelievable. Yeah. When I did the third book, it was on stalking. I had been stalked. My daughter and I were both stalked while she was in high school. And even after she went to college. And so I had firsthand knowledge of that and could write about it. And the fear, every time a phone rang, nobody wanted to answer it. And back then you didn't have a caller ID. Yeah. And maybe, or maybe not as to whether they would talk to an answering machine. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's a nightmare. It it truly is. So when you're writing a story, even a children's story, there has to be a reason for what the characters are doing. Right. Okay. They don't just go out and go fishing and then come back and play hide and seek. Or whatever they're going to play. Mm -hmm. And then they go in and go to bed. Excuse me. Why are they doing these things? Yeah. There has to be a reason. The plot is what moves your book forward. Mm -hmm. Every good book has one. Right. I have yet to read a book that doesn't. I have read books that don't have real good plots, 
or they get lost in the middle and then somehow pick it up at the end. Uh, I don't understand those books, but they're written. Mm -hmm. In order to have a good plot and a good start to your story, Mm -hmm. something has to happen. Right. Something that affects your main character. Right. When that happens, it's it's the old scientific thing. For every action, there is a reaction. Right. Okay. Sometimes the reactions are good. Sometimes they're bad. Sometimes you have to muddle through a bit till you figure out how you're going to react. Mm-hmm. Because not everything demands a split second answer. Right. And yet we all try to make them in split seconds. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't work like that, folks. It really doesn't. Um, probably the only thing that needs a split second answer is if you get a wedding repo- proposal. Right. You have to say yes or no. And you need to say it very quickly. Right. So you don't lose the person who's asking. Yes. Um, it, it just. It's what happens. In my first novel. It was the chief of police. Who. Got the call that the library hadn't opened. Right. And nobody would seen the librarian. She hadn't been to her favorite restaurant for breakfast. Nobody would seen her. So he has to go to her house and see if something's wrong. Right. That's his motivation. He's got to find out where this woman is. Yeah. He goes and he finds out there's something really wrong. She's dead. What do you think? Not, what do you, you gotta, think, go, go ahead. ahead? I was going to ask you, what do you think the important steps are to write in a plot? So when people um, write books and the plot isn't really strong and the person doesn't know where the author is coming at, You know, what are some of the things that you feel a a person has to really focus on? Biggest suggestion for getting your plot right is get a roll of cash register tape or the old adding machine tape and start with the first thing that's going to happen. In between the first thing and the next thing that happens, what does the person do who's doing something? Mm -hmm. What did the police chief do when he got the call that the library wasn't open? Right. He didn't say, so is today a holiday? (laughs) He went looking for the librarian. Right. Because everybody in town knew you could set your watch to her. She opened the library at nine o'clock in the morning. Right. And if by 902, he's getting a call, something's wrong. So he went to the restaurant where she always has breakfast. Maybe she got delayed there. Oh, wait, no, they hadn't seen her. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so he traces from the restaurant to her house, knowing that she generally walks, but he drives slowly the blocks to her house. And he gets there and he knocks and he doesn't get an answer, but the door opens. This is not a good sign. So then he goes inside. But you've got all those little tiny steps 
till he goes inside. Right. Then what does he do when he's inside? Obviously, he calls out to her first thing. Right. For all he knows, she's sick or she's fallen. And until he gets to her, he doesn't know what's happened. Right. Then he walks back outside because now he's got a crime scene. Mm -hmm. And he's got to call his crime scene investigators. And he's got to call his coroner. And get everybody there. Mm -hmm. And then he's got to find somebody who can go open the library. A way janitor opens the library and says, y'all can't come in. Because the library is a mess. And she never would have left it that way. Right. So now we have a secondary crime theme that the police chief has got to go over there and then he's got to get crime scene over there and then he's got to get the library's assistant librarian to find mm -hmm. out what's missing. Right. If so it's it's all leading up to finding out the clues to find out who killed her, why they killed her, and what did they use to kill her. Right. Um, because she was poisoned. And in order for this to happen, I had to go research poisons. Right. <laughs> So, you know, it's it's all in the steps. Tommy and his sister are going fishing. Why are they going fishing? Because dad's at work and mom's not sure what they're having for dinner. <laughs> so if they go catch fish, what are they having for dinner? They're having fish. Mm -hmm. And they're both good at fishing. They may only be eight and ten, but they've been doing this long enough that they know how to go bait their hooks, cast their reels, and catch fish. Right. And they'll bring them back, and their mother will clean them, and they'll have fish. Now, will dad get home in time for dinner? Who knows? We haven't written that part of this story yet. <laughs> After they get home from fishing and they've given mom their fish, that's when they decide to play hide and seek. Okay, they can do that. They've earned their chance to play, at least until lunchtime. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and what do they do after lunch? Do they have chores? We don't know this yet. We haven't written the story. But they probably have something to do. Even though they went fishing, they probably have some kind of chore. Mm -hmm. Whether it's just making sure their beds are made and their, their dirty clothes are picked up, that's a chore. Right. Whether... It's Saturday and there's school on Monday and mom wants to make sure all the homework's done. That could be the next chore. Mm -hmm. So it just, it depends on what ha is happening in the situation. Right. And you can make it as lively as you want to make it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the two kids can get into a water fight now at the creek where they're fishing. Right. Or the pond or the lake, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Could be a river. You decide. 
but make sure that they have a reason for doing what they're doing. Right. Maybe they know Grandpa's going to be down at the fishing hole and they're going to go down and see him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he tells good stories and they want to hear one. Right. And so maybe they're gone all day. And maybe they never get back to play hide and seek. They just get back with dinner. Right. And who knows, maybe Grandpa comes with them. Mm-hmm. And brings his catch. Right. But there has to be something that, A, motivates the character to start out with. Yeah. And then keeps them going. There has to be a reason to stay. If they've been there an hour and they haven't caught a fish, let me tell you, they're not staying. Mm -hmm. They have better things to do. They'll go pick berries. They'll go do something to help add to the meal. Right. But they're not going to spend all day sitting down there not catching any fish. Mm -hmm. Their attention span won't be long enough. Right. So it and it is it's it's important to have a plot. Because if you don't, no one knows where you're going. Exactly. And it's a twisty, turny, whatever. And you're going, why am I reading this? Mm -hmm. What is the point? And let me tell you, there are books that get published with no point. Oh, I've seen it many times. So um, besides writing it down on, on a paper and going one, two, three, four, after you've done that, is there a next step they should do to make sure? Should they start writing an outline or like? I don't even, I'm not an outline person, but they could write an outline. And if you're doing an outline, you're taking your first incident and you're writing everything you can about it. Mm-hmm. And then you move to the next incident. You get all those steps in there in between. And by the time you're done with the outline, your chapters are almost all written. Right. Because you've written all the steps that it took to do whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Or whatever your character's doing. Right. And it just makes sense that you would have everything done. Yeah. I, um. So it seems like you would write the outline. You would pretty much have everything done. And then you go a little bit more into detail. Just a little bit more and put them into chapters and break them up into um, page breaks where you go from one scene to the next, but it's really all the same chapter. Yeah. Um, that's as important as anything is knowing where to put those in and mm -hmm. where to put chapters in so that they're not running 20 pages to a chapter. Right. Um, I was reading a book, The Silent Patient, mm -hmm. and some of the chapters weren't more than two pages. Right. Some of them were four or five pages depending on what was happening and some of them had chapter breaks and were like seven or eight pages mm -hmm. and it was nice because I had pages where I could stop reading and not have to worry about remembering where I left off right I was either at the end of the chapter or I was at a page break right and that makes it very easy to read. Mm -hmm. um, that That's the best way. I did an outline when I took a course with James Patterson. Um, he would give us 10, 15 minutes. And then we had our assignment in a, a workbook that we could print off. And I kept it. Because I don't outline. 
Right. I get an idea. And I think about where I want it to go. And what I want my ending to be. Mm -hmm. And I sit at my computer and I start typing. Right. And I type until I can't type anymore. Yeah. And some days I can get two or 3,000 words in. And some days I'm doing good if I get 120 words in. Right. I'm not editing. I'm not going back to look for spelling errors. I'm just getting it in. Right. Now, when I go back to it on the next day, I might read the last two or three paragraphs I wrote so I know where in the heck I'm at. Yeah. And what my train of thought was at that time so I can pick it up and run with it. Right. Um, the one I'm working on right now is a thriller. And so I have to be sure to get all the thriller parts in mm -hmm. as well as the day-to-day -day stuff that's happening right. as a result of the first incident. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's tricky. It's right. not, it's not, it's not a mind thriller. Right. As far as, it's not psychological. Mm -hmm. It's a thriller in that something big happened that affects a community. Right. And the people within the community. And my main character is being blamed for the incident that happened, although it has nothing to do with him. Right. And it's, you know, his family's without, it, there was an explosion and it blew up a gas main and took out two blocks of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So homes are gone. Um, people are injured, some of them badly. And he was coming home from work and he's trying to figure out where his family is. And then he gets stopped by the police officer in charge who thinks it's all his fault because he's an investigative reporter and he must have done something that people were going to blow up his house. <laughs> and he's going, um, no, not working on anything. Just cleaning up loose ends so I could go on vacation. And the cop comes back on him and says, I didn't know people of the fourth estate took vacations. Mm -hmm. Well, in all honesty, reporters take vacations just like the rest of us. Right. Um, you may not know it because some of their stuff may be pre-recorded, mm -hmm. but they do. Just like your favorite disc jockey goes on vacation. Yeah. I mean, people have lives. Right. Um, over and beyond what they do for work. Mm -hmm. And so it gets involved and we have to look at the other neighbors because if this guy is not the one who did it or who caused it, who did? Right. So there's the whodunit factor that's in all mysteries. Mm -hmm. There's the suspense that has to be built into a thriller. Right. And so um, it's taking me a little longer. I'm working very hard on this one. Mm -hmm. I sit down to write. And when I sit down to write, get out of my way. Mm -hmm. I will get up to eat something and go to the bathroom. But for the most part, I will be writing. Right. And I will sit and write until it's done. Mm -hmm. I, may I like that. may take me three or four days or a week or two when I get to it, but it'll get done. It's my next book out and I want it out soon. 
Where did you get the idea to write the, the your uh, the book that you're working on right now? Um, I was reading a book called How to Write a Damn Good Thriller. <laughs> and I got part way through it. And it's here somewhere. Um, but I have misplaced it at the moment. So I need to go back to that before I go too much farther. Um, but I'm seven chapters into this book. Wow. So that so, kind of be the motivation? Um, the motivation right now is to find a place to live because this guy has two children that are going to be discharged from the hospital and his parents and a set of in-laws that can't be staying in a hotel real long because his wife was severely burned. Mm. And whether she survives or not is yet to be determined. Depends on how the story plays out. Where'd you get the idea from? My warped mind. <laughs> That's where they mostly come from. Wow. I'm somebody who likes to read thrillers, to watch movies that are thrillers. Um, I like the action adventure stories. So, yeah. I need something that's got some kick to it. Do you ever take things from your own life and incorporate them into the book? Oh, there's part of me in all of my books. I like that. Um, a friend of mine read Out of Flames, which was my second book. Um, because I needed a review for it mm -hmm. and I asked her to read it and I gave her the book and she said, Oh, your humor comes right through in this book. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oops, sometimes my humor is a little dry. Mm -hmm. um, that's the British in me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if I'm writing humor, it's not on purpose. I'm not a comedian. I leave that to my sister. Mm -hmm. And we always told her she was the world's best unpaid comedian. Hmm. Thought it should be a career move for her, but it didn't pan out. So if you had to take three or four things from what we talked about what are some of the most important things that you want people to know when they're writing a book and they're doing a fiction writing or a thriller or any type of book um, that has to do with fiction? Um, you know, what can help them, you know, from what we talked about, make making sure that they have a really good plot so the book succeeds and does well? Exactly. Um, like I said, start with your cash register tape wind it as far around as you need to and then when you get to where your ending is go ahead and cut it off but mm -hmm. don't do that until you've gotten there right and you can add or subtract whatever you've written mm -hmm. so that it's fine to write it in ink and pencil it out later right because it doesn't fit yes or Add something because if you don't put it in there, you've missed something really important. Right. So yeah, that's it's a it's for you to work with. Mm -hmm. It can go in a wastebasket when you're done. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you've got a guide. Yes. If you are someone who wants to outline, by all means, outline. Right. Right each scene in your outline for each chapter what's the first scene what's the second scene what's the third you can just put two or three sentences right go in and fill in the details later right when i did the james patterson one i had 135 scenes that I'd labeled as chapters. Right. 
when I actually started putting them together, yeah, some of the scenes were just a change in the same chapter. And it might have only taken a paragraph, but they were or two, but they were the most important paragraph. Right. And they helped with the transition to the next. Right. You have to make sure your scenes go together smoothly. Mm -hmm. And that takes a little work. You have to read them out loud and say, oh, that was rough. Mm -hmm. I do to fix it. Um, I have an editor who is forever saying more details, more details. And it's usually at the chapter change, the scene change. Somewhere in there, I need more details. Right. And that's why I keep him as an editor. Mm -hmm. That's where it catches me every time. Even though I try to do better. Mm -hmm. um, write it on the cash register tape do your outline scene by scene fill it in later and make sure there's a reason for what your characters are doing mm -hmm. stay true to your characters if your character is a little old lady who's stuck in her ways and believes in all the old ways that she grew up with mm -hmm. has to do that all the way through. Right. You can call her persnickety. Mm -hmm. You can call her crabby. <laughs> you can give her whatever adjective fits. Right. Because she might be a delightful lady. Yeah. But she expects you to adhere to the old school rules. Right. I had an aunt that we went to her house. She was a great aunt. And we sat quietly on the sofa and said nothing unless we were asked. Mm -hmm. Because children were seen. And not heard when she grew up. Mm -hmm. And she expected children to be seen and not heard unless they were asked a question. So after time spent with her and she would ask us each question and we'd answer it, then we could go out and play. So that kind of helped you with uh, when you with your book writing as you got older. Yeah, because it gave me a character. And it gave me some of the old values that I never would have known. Mm -hmm. Had they not been enforced. None of my other great aunts did that. Now, when um, you have some, you have different services on your website. What are some of the services that you offer on your website? Um, legacy writing. I offer a course in um, for the grandparents for a journey. If they actually want to write a children's book, I offer that one. And I have a course um, for if you want to do your whole novel. Mm -hmm. um, there's one on creating colorful characters. And eventually, there will be a mystery thriller suspense offering um, in the virtual world. Nice. I'm not there yet. But we're working on it. And do you offer anything free on your website for people who are interested? I do. Anybody who goes to my website and signs up gets a downloadable copy of 22 Reasons That Writers Don't Write, mm -hmm. even though they know they should be. Mm -hmm. um, 
for the legacy writing, there is a um, downloadable on what it is and why it's important. Mm -hmm. About a two pager, it's not real deep. Those are free. There is a test on the website that will tell you whether you are more towards the fictional side of writing or whether you are more towards the non-fictional side of writing. And then we can work with either one of those. The test is free. Okay. It, it's not 10 questions, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's not a real long test. Um, your IQ is not being tested. Grammar is not really being tested. It's your preferences in writing and the things that you would like to write about. Right. So it gives me an idea. Are you more to the creative side or are you looking for all the facts? Mm -hmm. And that helps me determine, you know, do I need to create a program for you individually or can you fit into one that I have? Right. I like that. Now, where can people find your website? Okay, it's https colon backslash backslash www dot Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-K-A, Vigas, V as in Victor, I, G as in George, U, S as in Sam, dot com. And you should be able to find them under programs i think is where they're listed excellent excellent oh my god this has been great rebecca i really i like it really enjoyed this segment i think people have to realize when they write a book especially fiction that they really need to have a plot you know they really need to think it through and think about what the synopsis is what the plot's going to be and then break it up into parts and make sure that like you said after each chapter make sure the next chapter the next scene flows and is very detailed because that's basically it, it seems you know people lack sometimes the detail or they lack you know what the what the main objective of the story is going to be so they have to really think it through before they write the book just don't jump in it put some thought into it is pretty much what you're saying oh yes now if you read robert b parker He's real short clipped, not a whole lot of detail, mm -hmm. but books are awesome. It's just the way he writes. Right. And you could learn from that, you know, by reading other writers and other fiction writers that you admire, you could look at their style, look how they write and look at, you know, the, the type of words they're using, the way they're set in their paragraphs, the, you know, the fonts they're using, you know, how each paragraph and each chapter go into, you know, flow together. And you can actually learn from other writers that have succeeded in this world. Exactly. And if you are not reading other writers, in the genre that you are interested in, you're missing the whole boat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I read just about everybody. Um, James Patterson, David Baldacci, um, Jeffrey Deaver, Patricia Cornwell, William Kent Kruger. Guys, if you haven't read him, pick him up. Mm -hmm. He's out of Minnesota. Um, and he writes about the Anishinaabe Native Americans. Uh, for those of you who can't pronounce that, say Ojibwe. Mm -hmm. Same tribe, just different. Right. Uh, but he writes about the... 10,000 Lakes mm -hmm. area and the reservation that is there and the things that go on between the non-res people and the res people and the fact that, you know, there are tribal police and you can't step on their toes. Yeah. But they can ask you for help. Mm -hmm. 
And um, his main character is Corcoran O'Connor, who is half Ojibwe and half Irish. Mm -hmm. And so he walks in both worlds. I like that. I like that a lot. And it's it's been a fascinating series. There are 20 books now. And I think I just finished 17. I'm a little behind. <laughs> but they're an outdoorsy book. Mm -hmm. They give you Native American culture. Right. As well, um, it's it's absolutely they're amazing books. He's written some other stuff that's equally as amazing, but the Cork O'Connor series that's probably the best series I've read since Lee Child wrote Jack Reacher. Wow, I like that. And I see that Lee has two new books out um, that he wrote himself and not with Andrew um, on Jack Reacher. So those will be on my next list to buy. But I'm running out of space for books. <laughs> that sounds I'm, okay. I'm thinking about a small library. There you go. I have part of my front porch was screened in and I'm thinking of having it enclosed. That's a good idea. Oh my God. You know, this has been amazing. I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. You really, you know, put some really good information in about writing books and, and plot writing and, you know, really thinking things through and making sure everything is well organized and well detailed when you write. And I think that's the main point that we are trying to get across today and that you just don't write, you know, put the ideas in your head and put them on paper. You have to make sure that there is a plot everything is well organized, everything's well detailed, everything flows, and people are really getting the understanding of what the concept of the book is. So that's some really good points that you gave today. And I, I really like that a lot. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show again. And everybody remember that Rebecca has her own podcast. She talks about a lot of different topics. She goes into legacy writing, memoir writing. She talks about how to write books. She shares a lot of different things on her previous uh, podcast. So go check them out. They're on our site and they're on her podcast. And this has been amazing, Rebecca. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I've enjoyed it. Uh, well, you have a great day. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye.